Hello everyone, I'm Christian Bean with the AWR Group of National Instruments and I'm going to be discussing network synthesis, uh, particularly synthesis for matching networks and how a new tool we've developed can aid designers in streamlining and speeding up their design flows and also exploring matching network topologies that they perhaps hadn't considered when designing manually. Uh, so <coughs> Just a few introductory comments. Um, we do believe the use of synthesis for matching networks can streamline design flows, not only for power amplifiers, uh, which we're going to be focusing on today, but also for LNAs, uh, antenna matches, particularly broadband and multiband antenna matches, and interstage matches, um, where you might be matching the output of a driver to the input of your PA. So in general, any two-port matching network, um, we can synthesize for you. Uh, it does allow the designer post-synthesis to quickly explore the results and the different trade-offs you might get uh, between and among the networks that you've synthesized. <coughs> and another big value add is uh, we interface directly with load pole data. So load pole has been a big focus for us the last couple of software releases and we're building upon that and now taking you to be able to uh, directly synthesize your matching networks after you've characterized your device with load pull. And it's very useful at the beginning of a design um, just to sort of uh, quantify the trade-offs you might uh, get and the different performance targets you might be able to reach. Uh, things like device sizing uh, decisions. If you're a mimic designer, how much active periphery do you need uh, in order to reach your target but not over design? If you're designing with package parts, uh, can really aid in selecting the best part for you at the beginning of your design process. Uh, so <clears throat> a few comments about our approach uh, with this new tool. Um, we do take advantage of recent uh, improvements in computer processing power, and not only the raw processing power, but also work that's been done on algorithms that we use to make uh, this new approach to matching network synthesis possible. More specifically, a modern PC can evaluate roughly 10 million circuit responses uh, per second, and we take full advantage of that. For the parameter value optimization, we use a, we use a variant of a genetic optimization algorithm that's been developed over uh, the past uh, decade plus, so it has some history behind it. And it is uh, very effective for circuit response type problems. Um, <coughs> Just to talk about the topology search approach we use, uh, one of the inputs the user has to decide is which elements to use in the series and shunt slots in the matching networks. So just to, uh, just to show, we've got a very simple example where uh, the designer selected uh, capacitors and transmission lines for the series slots and capacitors, inductors, and resistors for the shunt slots. And then uh, our approach is basically to do an exhaustive search, uh, explore all possible matching network topologies by expanding the solution stage by stage up to the maximum number of uh, user-defined matching sections. So that's another input the user has to have at the beginning of the synthesis is what's the maximum number of uh, matching sections to consider. And then we basically just uh, expand the solution stage by stage up to that maximum number. Uh, heuristics or experience is also uh, taken into con consideration. For example, a series transmission line can follow another series transmission line so you can get uh, a stepped impedance answers, uh, stepped impedance transmission line answers, and also fully distributed matching networks for higher frequencies. You don't have to use lumped elements. Uh, but for instance, a series cap uh, can't follow a series cap just because it doesn't make sense, so we're not going to do that when we go through the search. Other practical considerations we've put in, uh, DC open and short paths, that can be a constraint uh, for the topology search. So for instance, again, sticking with the example of a high power PA, you don't want to short the drain or collector of your device with your matching network, so you can stipulate that that side of the matching network will be DC open, uh, the side next to the device. Uh, component limits and discrete values, so if you've got uh, d 
design kit of inductors and capacitors in your lab and you need to build a quick prototype, uh, you can stipulate that the synthesis uses only those discrete values for those components. If you've already established a, a feed network, uh, again for your drainer collector for instance, um, we can consider that and that'll be part of the, the synthesis, the impact of that feed network across your bandwidth. And also another practical consideration, uh, you can put constraints on the first or last element in the network. So for instance, you've got a, you're designing with package parts and that part uh, has a large flange, you can stipulate that the element next to the device will be a wide uh, microstrip line just so you can practically mount the device. Uh, so <coughs> just to illustrate, uh, again, the topology search, uh, after each stage, we sort the solutions from best to worst, and then the user is given some control over the threshold for which the solutions are uh, passed into the next uh, expansion stage. Uh, so that allows some trade-offs between speed and search depth. Uh, you might want to do a quick search at the beginning just to sort of quantify what's possible uh, for you and what design targets are possible and then when you get uh, that taken care of you can go back and do a more exhaustive search and make sure you're getting the, the best answers for your problem. And then we just uh, expand the solution up to n here in this slide and again being the uh, maximum number of matching network sections which is our uh, user input. Uh, so again our approach is basically just to do an overall uh, exhaustive search through the matching network uh, possible topologies. How does this look in the software? Uh, just a few snippets here. Uh, a dialogue from the software. Uh, we've got uh, the user selecting series and shunt components. What's going to be considered for those slots? Uh, you can see the maximum number of sections uh, that's being stipulated. And then we're going to give you an approximate idea of the search space. Uh, in include a couple more components. Uh, in this case, an additional component for the series slot and two for the shunt and the search space size will increase and also increase the maximum number of matching sections and that will grow the search space size as well. Uh, so this illustrates also that uh, you know we can handle quite a large uh, search space size. Uh, again going back to a previous slide where I mentioned the uh, algorithms and the raw computing power. Uh, <coughs> Diving into a bit of a uh, load pole example I mentioned earlier, our interface directly with load pole data. So the idea here is we've got a device that uh, the designer is characterized with load pole over this uh, locus of impedances shown on the 5M Smith chart here. We've got PAE and output power contours over a frequency range, um, 1.8 to 2 gigahertz. And the blue traces are the PAE. That's actually 63% uh, efficiency contours at uh, five or six different fundamental frequencies. And then the red is, uh, of course, the output power contours. Uh, same thing over five or six fundamental frequencies. And each of those contours is at the 1 dB compression point. So we're characterizing what the device is capable of at the 1 dB uh, gain compression point. Another way to look at this is with uh, what we call an overlap contour. It's the combination of both those performance criteria uh, so each of those oval contours, uh, again, at a fun different fundamental frequency, is the region where we're able to meet both those uh, performance criteria, the 63% efficiency and 51 dBm output power, roughly 125 watts. So instead of having the designer have to put in impedance targets for the synthesis problem, uh, we just put in goals based directly on the load pole data. Uh, so you can see here another dialogue from the software. We've entered the 51 dBm and asked for uh, that power level or greater. So trying to reach greater than 125 watts. And also 63% efficiency, uh, another greater than goal. So no need to stipulate uh, specific impedances across each uh, fundamental frequency point. And we just ask for the performance goals directly. Uh, this can be uh, also uh, put in terms of subbands if necessary for dual band type problems. You can see the start and stop. Uh, it's optional to uh, take the default 
out there and put in a specific frequency. Uh, you can weight goals differently. Uh, you can have sloped goals. Anything you can do in a, uh, the optimization in our software, uh, you have access to here. And uh, <laughs> then building upon this, we've got uh, another device, similar, char similar characterization, uh, three overlap contours that, of course, change with frequency so that traces out the trajectory you want to hit with your matching network, uh, which we've actually synthesized a matching network here. That's the darker trace, and you can see it's following the trajectory uh, outlined by the load pole contours. So uh, we've hit our target for the fundamental frequency. Uh, the different fundamental frequencies. And we can put in additional goals for the second and third harmonic. So if you're needing to maximize efficiency, for instance, you want to take the harmonic terminations into account. And another thing you can do are, are these uh, Smith chart targets. Uh, give the synthesis tool a, a specific target to hit at the higher harmonics. And we've got one for the second and third harmonic. And if we extend the uh, the frequency range there of the matching network we've synthesized, you can see we not only hit the fundamental frequency range, uh, again, stipulated by the load pole data, uh, but also we're hitting those targets for the, the higher order uh, harmonics, the second and third harmonic terminations. I mentioned post-processing or post-synthesis, the capability, the architecture we put in the software that makes it easy for the user to uh, compare all the results that have just been synthesized uh, just for instance, we've got three candidate networks we've synthesized, uh, represented by these um, pictograms here on the left. And uh, we've taken a lot of care to make it easy to compare the results of each uh, answer or each matching network post-synthesis. So the rectangular graph here, for instance, shows uh, the performance versus frequency. That's our original 1.8 to 2 gigahertz uh, fundamental frequency range. And we're just comparing uh, the efficiency and the output power capability of the network with the device. And it's easy to compare all the networks at once, to select uh, one network, uh, move to the next, the results will update or select uh, any subset of the, uh, the networks you've synthesized. Uh, so again, we have taken great care to make it very easy to compare results uh, post-synthesis. Additional applications, uh, we fo focused mostly on uh, power amplifiers and some of the integration with load pole uh, data we have. Uh, but we also do direct conjugate matching. So uh, that's just asking for the uh, minimizing mismatch loss. Um, and uh, again, just uh, synthesizing networks that are uh, going to be a conjugate uh, to, your, uh, to the network uh, you're matching to. Useful for broadband and multiband antenna matching. Uh, here we've got a, a graph of a antenna that's the blue trace. It's pre-matched, so to speak, in a couple bands of interest, centered around one gigahertz and four gigahertz. And then we've synthesized networks that uh, yeah, improve that match for the designer. And again, it's important to realize, in this case, we're synthesizing based on mismatch loss. So you're going to get lossless or at least very low loss networks that not only improve the match but are also going to in this case uh, deliver the most power possible to the antenna. Interstage matching um, uh, again that was typically uh, when you're matching a, a driver to a PA uh, that can be a uh, time-consuming task when you have two sets of complex impedances uh, across a, a frequency range and uh, we can handle that uh, with the synthesis wizard. You just need to stipulate uh, which networks uh, or um, which schematics or which data sources uh, are the driver and which are the PA. Noise matching, we have a goal for uh, noise figure. And of course, you can make uh, that a less than goal and keep the noise figure uh, less than uh, your performance target and synthesize the input match for your LNA. And finally, the Smith chart impedance targets. Uh, I showed that with uh, the harmonic example, but uh, that can be general as well. You can use that uh, for uh, fundamental frequency targets if necessary. Uh, so again, we think we've created a very general tool that can synthesize two port matching, matching networks for a wide variety of, of applications and help you uh, not only streamline your design flow, but 
consider different topologies uh, much more quickly than you can do when designing manually. Thank you.